Hey folks, we have another ThinkPad video here. Uh, another computer video, another ThinkPad video. Seems to be a theme here. Yeah, I've had some ThinkPads uh, for a while that I've needed to make videos of, so let's get them done, shall we? I've had this ThinkPad for, um, I think, a couple months now. Uh, you can see what it is from the title, the ThinkPad L430. I bought it for about $100 on eBay because that was cheap at the time for one of these and they were being sold off by a bunch of recycle recyclers and stuff like that I think it was a hundred bucks I forget what the price was I got it for super cheap though because of what it was and uh... this is what it is, it's a ThinkPad L430 get a good look at it there now these lower end ThinkPads are something I've not explored before if you've ever heard of the R series like the R50 the R the R51, the R61. Uh, this is, this was for a while the modern equivalent of that, which is the L series, the L430. It is essentially a lower end version of the ThinkPad T430. You know, you can you can see the design language is very similar between these two. Only you can tell this one is a little bit more premium mostly because of what it has backlit keyboard um, and all and speakers on the sides instead of on the bottom you know things like that they are very subtle differences between the two they both have the same screen resolution because they both have the low end screen they're both 1366 by 768 how funny is that huh uh... and they both originally came with i5s but i changed this one and we'll get to that later but as you can see, this is essentially a low-end version of the ThinkPad L430 or ThinkPad T430, and we'll take a look at why. So let's t have a tour around the laptop first. On the front, you can see there's no latch for opening the screen. It uses a magnet. Actually, it doesn't even use a magnet. It uses a, a, a hinge stop to keep the thing shut. Whereas on the T series, it uses a latch. At least it did up until the, the ThinkPad right after this, which we just looked at, the 440 series. Um, the L series doesn't use a latch, which in my mind isn't a bad thing because latches do break. I had one break on a T420 once. <clears throat> so that's not such a bad thing. Uh, Tore the rest of the machine. The speakers are in this grill under here. I couldn't get this out, this crap in the grill right there. I tried, but to no avail, it just wouldn't come out. There is one disadvantage to the uh, the non-latch design. You see how the plastic sort of isn't uniform? And it kind of sticks up right there? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing, unfortunately. Looks a little sloppy, but you know what? It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. So here's the I.O. you get. So on the side here, we have this vent for the CPU heatsink, of course. Of course, there's a, on that side, there's the rest of it. You have VGA with the screws, which is nice to see. That way the connector doesn't fall out if you're uh, giving a presentation or something. Looks like this port's a little dirty. I never noticed that. I should probably clean that. These ports were a little dirty when I first got it. It's got a mini display port there. Uh, USB 3, USB 2. And what would have gone in this blank here is an express card slot. You could choose between a 3-4 and a 5-4. Uh, I don't use express cards, so it doesn't really matter to me. On the other side, you get an SD card slot, headset jack, an optical drive, or, or I should say an ultra bay. You could put more than just an optical drive in there if you wanted to. I'm probably going to leave that alone. And um, there's also a USB 2.0 port that's a charging port, so, you know, for phones and tablets and junk. And of course you have a uh, Kensington lock slot there. On the back you have an Ethernet port that's not centered that well as you can see. <laughs> a little sloppy there. There's the battery. I do not have the extended one. I just have a regular battery. And of course you have your cylindrical barrel type 20 volt connector that all ThinkPads use up until a certain point. Now here's the bottom. This one, as you can see, came with a Windows 8 Pro COA. It uh, seemed to have come that way with the key in the BIOS, so it's your typical Windows 8 era machine. 
Uh, I, however, am not running Windows on it. I am running Linux, so that uh, that license is kind of useless for me at the moment. There's a panel here. When it pops off, you can change out the hard drive, the RAM, and I think the wireless card. If I'm not mistaken. No, no, the wireless card's under the keyboard. My bad. Um, let me just open it up and show you. Yeah, I think actually showing you is a little bit nicer than... Uh, than uh, just trying to guess here. I should know because I've been inside this laptop in and out to change this, change the CPU out. But yeah, here you go. Yeah, you have uh, one of the RAM slots is here. The other one's under the keyboard, as is typical for these ThinkPads. And here, of course, is where the hard drive is. Um, it takes a different caddy than most of the uh, ThinkPads I've worked with. It's literally uh, some mylar that with some metal sort of glued to it. I had to pull the rubber pieces out of this to get a bigger drive in there. I put this Toshiba 500 gig drive in here because I had windows on this at one point. <clears throat> this drive's probably going to come out, um, and I'll get to that later in the video. But it's really easy to put the drive in. It's super, super easy. There you go, it's in. And looks like there's a slot here for either Bluetooth or... Uh, I think you could probably put an, either an MSAT or an M.2 SSD in there or something like that, too. Uh, a lot of these ThinkPads let you do that, so that's always a possibility. <clears throat> so it gives you access to all you need, even on the lower-end models, which is nice. Still has a docking connector, which is good to see. And uh, in general, it's, you know, they didn't really skimp on the features of the ThinkPad. It's just a, a cost, almost just a cost-reduced version of a T-series ThinkPad, which is nice to see. I actually really like the fact that they do that. That way, um, if you don't like the rubberized coating that a lot of these ThinkPads use, you could just get an L-series ThinkPad, which they still sell to this day. You could just get an L-series ThinkPad. This uses plain old plastic, so if you're not a fan of the rubber, you could always get this and get a lot of the same features you get out of uh, a regular T-series notebook. And as you can see, the keyboard is basically the same. Uh, it even has the ThinkLite logo on it, even though there is no ThinkLite on this particular device. This resembles the design of the newer ThinkPads a little bit more, even, too. Now, at first glance, the keyboard and trackpad and the track point might all look the same. But compared to the T430, the L430 did skimp on this. It's not a Synaptics trackpad. It's an, it's an Alps Elantec uh, trackpad, which isn't a big deal if you're using Windows. The drivers work fine, but on Linux, that's a little bit hokey. The only uh, operating system I've managed to get the um, the track point scrolling and the, everything else working properly is Ubuntu 1510 and 1604. Use those, and you'll have no problems with this machine, but if you want to use something like Debian, which I might be using on here anyway, uh, it's not going to interface with the trackpad the way quite the way you want it to, which is kind of a shame. Uh, but, you know, I'll boot it up and demonstrate it. It does work. It's just a little bit hokey to use. As you can see, it acts like a normal ThinkPad. This version, I was lucky, it does have the webcam. Some of these don't. But anyway, other than that, I mean, it's it's a lower-end ThinkPad. It has a non-backlight keyboard. with You have no backlight or keyboard light whatsoever. And on this particular model of ThinkPad, you cannot get them to work. I tried putting the <clears throat> keyboard from this ThinkPad into here, and the backlight just doesn't work. So let me log in here. The keyboard still feels fine. It's you know the same sort of style as the T430. This screen really flickers a lot on video. Well, wow. maybe the screen is lower end than I thought. Let's see if I can brighten this up a little bit. There we go. It's a 1366 by 768 display, so it's not the most high-end thing in the world. <clears throat> but I have done some modifications to this machine. Uh, it originally came. This is this is a Sandy Bridge or this is an Ivy Bridge-based system. 
But for some reason, the low-end versions of these came with Sandy Bridge chips. This came with a 2520M i5 in it. And, you know, putting that in an Ivy Bridge machine just kind of does a disservice to it. <clears throat> Especially in a laptop, because you want better graphics. And my dad had a laptop die recently. So what I did is I pilfered the i3-3110 from that M from uh, that machine. And I stuck it in here. I, I literally dismantled the whole thing to get to change out the CPU. And it was well worth it, because that i3 happened to have HD 4000 graphics on it, which benefits this machine greatly. Not only that, but it's, it's using what it's supposed to be using, which is an Ivy Bridge chip. And the i3s on, um, <clears throat> the i3s on, lap on these uh, laptops um, don't seem to be much different from their i5 counterparts. Maybe some more cache, but that's really it. You don't get quad-core unless you get a specific quad-core model of an i5 or an i7. And I think the only, you only get quad-core models of the i5s on Skylake or maybe even the one after that. But on Ivy Bridge, they're all dual-core up until you get a quad i7 or something. So it doesn't make a huge amount, of, a huge difference. But there you go. Sorry about the flickering. It's the screen sucks, I guess. It's a 2.4 gigahertz uh, chip, dual core, hyper threaded, HD graphics 4000. It it was an, a hu a nice upgrade for this machine. Uh, I went down 100 megahertz on the processor speed, but that really doesn't matter. I still have better graphics out of it, and that's pretty nice. Overall, I really like this machine. It uh. Despite it being a lower end ThinkPad, it's still very nice. This is the chips that I was trying to—I was mentioning earlier. It's the um, HM76 Express chipset, which is an Ivy Bridge chipset. So the fact that they put a Sandy Bridge chip in there just makes me scratch my head a little bit. Maybe it was for cost reasons. I, I don't know. The nice part about these L-series machines as well is they still have some of the good wireless chips in them. It uses an Intel Advanced N6205, which is a nice wireless N chip. Intel wireless tends to do really well for itself. So that's pretty nice. I like that. And, you know, there's not much else to say about it. I just wanted to mention this laptop because uh, it's an L-series. What I can say about these is they, the fact that they're they're a little cheaper is apparent, especially with the fact that the plastic doesn't completely go flush with this when you close it because it uses hinge stops to hold it shut. But other than that, it's still a really tough, durable machine um, and has all the features that, has most of the features that a ThinkPad like this would apart from things like the backlit keyboard and the ThinkLite. Um, that's really the only huge difference is that it's lacking in some of the more... Um, bells and whistles, but all the essentials are still there and they still work. Um, the only real gripe I have with this machine is the manufacturer of the trackpad and the track point um, circuitry and the, all that stuff. I don't like Alps and Elon Tech uh, hardware all that much. I like Synaptics because it's much more well supported, especially in Linux. <clears throat> and you guys know I'm a Linux guy, so you know that's that's an important thing to me. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's really all I had to say about this thing.